My husband certainly believes in entertaining his dinner guests with the usual Courtney hospitality. You stay out of this, Martha. I'll handle my business affairs in my own way. So I've noticed. I'm surprised at you, Hop. You know how Mr. Courtney is, madame? I most assuredly do. Pretty little trinket, isn't it? Considering it's worth only half a million dollars? I'll take that next No, you don't. I've got a cut coming from its sale. If your husband thinks he's going to handle this deal alone, he's mistaken. We are equal partners. Seems to me that you two gentlemen are so busy trying to double-cross each other, you've completely forgotten Jim O'Brien, the man who consigned this next to you. Don't you think he should have some say as to how the profits are divided? Still concerned about your ex-sweetheart, aren't you? Well, for your information, darling, he's probably lying dead in some far-off jungle. I haven't heard from him since he sailed for Burma. If anything has happened to him, Henry, it's because you deliberately sent him into that different country on a wild goose chase. Well, maybe you're right, Martha. After all, you only married me for spite because of a silly quarrel with him. Yes. That was the biggest mistake of my life. But from now on, I'm through. Through with you and your entire household. And if you and your equally crooked partner want to slit each other's throats, go right ahead and do it. Do you wish to finish dinner, sir? Might as well. Sit down, Ran. Killing each other won't do either one of us any good. Jim O'Brien. In person, Courtney. Hello, Hobbs. 
How are you, sir? Never felt better and had less. Well, you gentlemen act surprised to see me. I, I, uh... I know. You thought I'd never get back to the States alive. Isn't that what you're trying to say? Why should I say that, Jim? Well, I'm glad to see you. Well, meet Henry Rand, my new partner. Oh, you boys really get along well together. Oh. The De Norman necklace. Yes, it seems to me I, I do remember the, uh, the old countess entrusted it to a friend who sent it to this country to be sold. Mr. Courtney and I were just discussing an offer for the sale. And a very good offer, too, Jim. Yeah, must have been, judging from the uh, violent discussion. Uh, by the way, how's Martha? She seemed rather upset when she left the room. I couldn't hear what was said, but if looks could kill, a gun in her hand was only a decoration. Suppose we skip the preliminaries. When did you arrive in town? This morning. I know you feel terrible at the thought of my suffering on this trip. I worked my way back from Burma on a tramp steamer in the engine room. It almost broke my back. But it was worth it finding you here. Courtney? I believe I have about six months back salary coming to me from you, plus the advance payment on the Countess necklace. I'm here to collect. I mailed your salary to you every month, Jim. Letters came back, address unknown. You've represented me long enough to know that I always make good a promise. Mm. I represented you long enough to know you double-crossed everyone who's ever dealt with you. Oh, I'm sure you misjudge, Mr. Courtney. This transaction is none of your business, Rand, unless you care to assume part of Courtney's obligation. Well, I hardly meant it that way. Then keep quiet. This is not the first time I've had trouble with Courtney. But it's going to be the last. Either he pays off or returns the necklace to the Countess. She trusted me, and I don't intend for her to be cheated. You'll get all this coming to you, Jim. Where can you be reached? Regent Hotel, but I've heard that gag before. I need the money, and I want it now. All right. I'll be at my office tonight. Meet me there around 9 o'clock, and I'll pay you off in full. Okay. I'll be there. And don't forget... This is one time I'm not fooling. Well, that was a surprise. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. I didn't know anybody was in here. I had an appointment with Mr. Courtney, but uh, apparently he hasn't shown up. Oh, uh, he'll be along directly. He often works very late. I'll just clean up the offices on the opposite side of the hall, and I'll catch this one later on. I hope I didn't bother you, sir. Not at all. Ticket, Miss Chandler. Burma's a long way off. I hope you have a pleasant trip. Thank you.
Shot twice with a small caliber revolver. Probably a 32. Anything missing? The Donovan necklace is gone. Courtney was to have locked it up in the safe tonight until the vault opened in the morning. Anybody else but you know that he had the diamonds? His wife and Jim O'Brien, his former European representative. Courtney was to meet O'Brien here at 9 o'clock. Settle a salary difference between them. There was a man here just about that time. He was awfully upset because he had to wait. What did he look like? Oh, he was a nice-looking young man. About 35, six feet tall, and had on a light suit and hat. That fits O'Brien's description, all right. You know where we can find him? Stopping at the Regent Hotel. All right, Williams. Mrs. Courtney have been out all evening. Well, when he comes in, tell him I'm here waiting at my hotel to hear from him. That's right. And he better call me. Are you Jim O'Brien? Yeah, what can I do for you? We're taking a little trip down to headquarters. Well, thanks for the invitation, but I was just going to bed. Maybe some other time. Up with them. Hey, what's the idea? I haven't done anything. Take it easy, O'Brien. I don't know what you're looking for, but whatever it is, you won't find it in my room. Hmm. The lady friend uses nice perfume. Did she help you pull the job? Hey, what are you talking about? In case you're interested, O'Brien, Henry Courtney was found in his office half an hour ago. Murdered. What? M.C. What's her name? Why can we locate her? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Come on, come on. Where'd you get this handkerchief? I, um... Uh, I found it on the sidewalk. It's a 32, boss. Two shots have been fired. Say, I never saw that gun before in my life. I don't know how it got in that grip. All right, all right. Let me give you a little advice. Don't do any talking till you've seen an attorney. I know how you feel. But it's a frame-up, Slick. I didn't have anything to do with the killing, and I didn't steal the necklace. Sure, sure. I suppose next you're going to tell me they can't do this to you. They can't put you in jail. But you're here, aren't you? Yes, I'm here all right, and it looks like I haven't got a chance. The grand jury upheld all the evidence against me, and they're holding me for trial. Cigarette? Thanks, pal. I'll get you a whole box of them when I get out. Okay. You know, I'm only down here on a vacation. 
Vacation? You call it being locked up in here a vacation, eh? Sure. After spending nearly five years in the shoe factory up at the big house, this is a pipe. <laughs> they transferred me to this clink so I could testify at the hearing of a friend of mine. I only got a couple of more months to do when I go back, figuring time off for good behavior. You're lucky. Looks like I'm stuck in here for a long time. Say, I ain't noticed no mouthpiece come in to see you. Ain't you got one? Mouthpiece? Oh, you mean a lawyer? One of those fast-talking gents that knows all the answers. <laughs> they offered me a public defender. Generous, ain't they? I had one of those birds once, and the judge threw the penitentiary at me. <laughs> Hello, Slick. How are you, Mr. Lanning? What's the dope? Well, your testimony won't be needed after all. You mean I gotta go back up the river? I don't think so. But it won't be for long. Well, it could be worse. Hey, O'Brien, meet my lawyer. Mr. Lanning, Jim O'Brien, he's a pal of mine. Oh, oh yeah. Well, I think I've heard about your trouble. You're mixed up in that Courtney case, aren't you? <laughs> mixed up, don't describe it. Jim needs a good mouthpiece, Mr. Lanny, and I was telling him about you. Do you think you can do anything for him? Well, I might be able to, Slick. Although, from what I've heard, he's in a pretty tough spot. Come on, uh, tell me all about it, O'Brien. Witness will confine his answers to the questions. I was present during the entire argument between O'Brien and my just before O'Brien opened the French windows and stepped inside. Was Hobbs the butler present? I believe he was. Put Mr. Hobbs on the stand. I heard Mr. O'Brien accuse Mr. Courtney of trying to cheat him. My client has testified that while he was standing outside the house, he saw Courtney and Rand fighting. Now, is that true? They did have a slight business argument, sir, but it was nothing serious. Put Mr. Flanagan on the stand. When I opened the door, Mr. Courtney was lying there, dead. Did you ever see the defendant before today? Why, yes. He's the man that was in Mr. Courtney's office when I went in to clean up. And he acted mighty strange, too. I object, Your Honor. Objection overruled. Proceed. The ballistics proved that this gun fired the shots that killed Henry Courtney. Where did you find the gun? Sergeant Williams found it in O'Brien's suitcase the night he was arrested. Put the defendant on the stand. I tell you, I didn't kill him. But you admit that you quarreled with Courtney on the evening he was killed? You threatened him? I object, Your Honor. My client has never testified he threatened the deceased. Objection sustained. O'Brien, you were in love with Courtney's wife. She jilted you. You killed him out of revenge. I never saw Courtney after I left his house. I did wait for him at his office, but he failed to show up. Did you see Mrs. Courtney while you were standing outside the house? I don't remember. Where is Mrs. Courtney now? I don't know. Where did you hide the Denorman necklace? I didn't steal the necklace. How did you come to be in possession of this handkerchief with Mrs. Courtney's initials on it? I, uh, I found it on the sidewalk. Was Mrs. Courtney in the office when you killed her husband? Now I object, Your Honor. Objection sustained. If you did not kill Henry Courtney, why did you hide the murder gun in your suitcase? I don't know how the gun got in my suitcase. Why doesn't Mrs. Courtney come forward and testify on your behalf? Why has she disappeared? I told you I don't know what happened to Mrs. Courtney. Or who killed her husband. You killed Henry Courtney because you were in love with his wife. The defendant is innocent. I believe O'Brien came back for the sole purpose of getting even with his employer. O'Brien and Courtney quarreled over the sale of the Denorman necklace. I heard them. And I ask you, gentlemen of the jury, to return a verdict of not guilty. I demand the death penalty for the accused. wanted in the warden's office, O'Brien. Do you think? Do you suppose he's heard from the governor that maybe I have a reprieve? All I know is that he wanted in the warden's office. Step out. 
Good luck, pal. Thanks. Looks like you're not going to hang after all. Put in a good word for me to the governor. I hope it's a reprieve. You sent for me, Warden? You have some news? Perhaps not the kind of news you've been waiting for. Lady here to see you. Hello, Jim. I'm so sorry. Why should you be sorry? If that's all you have to say to me, Warden, I'd just as soon return to my cell. But I have to speak to you, Jim. You must understand. Maybe I understand too much. Take him back. I... I guess there isn't much I can say, Mrs. Courtney. Well, there's no reason for him to behave that way, Warden. Before you married Henry Courtney. Yes. I tried to tell him it was all a mistake. And I'd been a fool, but he wouldn't listen. Penitentiaries are full of men who've allowed bitterness to ruin their lives, overrule their sense of right and wrong. Why don't you talk to O'Brien's attorney? He could deliver a message for you. Do you think Jim would send him? Oh, I don't know why not. Roger Lanning represented him at his trial. I understand he's trying to carry a reprieve through to the governor. Well, how much time is there left to work? Jim O'Brien will be hanged in four days. Thank you very much for your kindness, Gordon. I wish I could do more. How does it feel to be a, be a free man again? Warden, you get kind of attached to the place after you've been in it for a while. I'll sort of miss the old homestead. Anyway, I ain't out yet. <laughs> well, you will be in a few moments. Uh, suit fit all right? Well, if you don't mind me speaking plain, Warden, this kind of a suit shouldn't be worn by a dog. Besides, it scratches. <clears throat> well, that's too bad. <clears throat> Yes, I'll have to speak to our tailor about that. I can't have any of our guests leaving here with a complaint. Hmm. Well, here's your release. Here's ten dollars for you. I only hope you keep your promise and stay away from safes that don't belong to you. Don't want to see you here again, except on a visit. Don't worry about me, Warden. From now on, I'm on the straight and narrow. Besides, I was talking to a guy down at the shoe factory, and he tells me safe cracking ain't nothing like it used to be. They got too many trick gadgets on them nowadays. Well, I mean an honest job. Oh, sure. I'm going to work for the Keystone Luck Company. They're pretty lucky getting a man like me with my experience. Of yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Goodbye, Slick, and good luck to you. Uh, Warden, would you do me a favor? I'd like to have you bust this ten spot into a couple of fives. Good. There you are. Thanks. Take this five bucks and buy me a nice bouquet of flowers, will you? Certainly, but... Who's it for? Jim O'Brien. I ain't seen him recently, but the grapevine says he's going to be hung in a couple of days. Yeah, that's right, Slick. Maybe he's a lot better when he takes that last walk, if he thought somebody remembered him. 
I'll be glad to buy the flowers. By the way, did you know O'Brien before he was convicted? Bells. When I was on my vacation down at the county jail, he was a regular guy. He handed out cigarettes and magazines to me, and I ain't a bloke to forget a pal. He'll get the flowers. Well, too bad you're a warden. Perhaps my request is a little unusual, Mr. Lanning. What of? No prisoner has ever escaped from the death house, Mrs. Courtney. Just can't be done. Surely there's some way. Just why is the widow of Henry Courtney so interested in freeing the man convicted of his murder? Because I want the Norman necklace. Why, I'm beginning to see a little more daylight. I always thought O'Brien knew where those diamonds were. That's why I defended him. If I, um, do help you release him, what makes you think he'll turn the necklace over to you? Well, don't forget, we were engaged at one time. Well, I'm always interested in handling any interesting case. The body, of course, can be a satisfactory. I know the man who will handle the sale of the necklace. Your fee will be one third. I uh, suppose you realize, Mrs. Courtney, that if anything happens, we might find ourselves in a very unpleasant predicament. Yes, I thought it all over, and I'm willing to take the risk. Now, what's it to be? Yes or no? I believe I might figure a way to work it. Where can I get hold of it? At the Windsor Arms, under the name of Chandler. Goodbye, Mr. Lanning, and thank you. O'Brien. Hey, O'Brien. The oh. lawyer's here. Hello, Mr. Lanning. Oh, yeah. Good to see you. I want to thank you again for what you did for me. Well, I didn't do as much as I thought I could, Jim, but I haven't stopped fighting. You mean uh, maybe I still have a chance? Well, that's up to you. Sure looks like O'Brien's attorney's given up all hope. Well, listen, I want to talk fast, so I'll get what I'm saying. I'm working to frame an escape for you. If you dig up the Denorman necklace. But I told you, I didn't kill Henry Courtney, and I didn't steal the necklace. Okay, okay. Stick to your story if you want to. So you're innocent, so you don't know where the jewels are. You do want to get out of here, don't you? Sure. But you defended me. Do you think I'm guilty? Yes. A lot of other people do, too. Oh. I see. Well, if I agree to your proposition... Here's the plan. You're going to sign a confession naming Frisco Malone as your accomplice in the murder of Henry Courtney. Malone will be picked up. You'll be given a stay of execution. Transferred back to the county jail to testify at his trial. Well, who's Malone? I've never even heard of him. I've never, probably never even seen him either. Just leave that to me. He'll never come to trial. Well, then how am I going to testify against him? Don't worry about that. You do just as I tell you. And you'll pull the hammer. Okay. What have I got to lose? Copper, kind of out of your territory, aren't you? No, not this trip. Come on, the DA wants to talk to you. What for? 
O'Brien just signed a confession implicating you in the murder of Henry Courtney. Why are the guys crazy? Tell him that when he shows up at your hearing. Come on, get your hat. Lieutenant Nelson. Well, but good luck, O'Brien. I sincerely hope your confession and the new testimony will influence the trial board to recommend clemency for you. Thank you, Warden. City desk. Yeah. What's that? You say O'Brien's escaped. Uh, wait a minute. Send up a rewrite, man. Okay, shoot. He made a getaway while being transported from the death house back to the city jail. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. I got it. The police have thrown out a dragnet and claim it's impossible for O'Brien to avoid recapture. Yeah, I got it. Go ahead. Hello. Yeah, this is Lanny. Oh, hello, Lefty. Everything worked okay, boss. He's out. Good. Take him to the apartment. I'll meet you there later on. Well, Lefty and Trent sprung O'Brien, all right. A little off my mind. Got to work fast now, Mrs. Courtney. The quicker you get your hands on that necklace, the quicker you'll take a load off my mind. And uh, another thing, I advise you to stay away from this office. Police will be up here asking a lot of questions. I understand, Mr. Lane. You know where to contact me. Ninety-nine years and six more weeks, and you will be out of the town of Boos. Ninety-nine turns and six more seconds, and I'll have the darn things loose. <laughs> there they are, pal. I never saw a lock I couldn't open. Slick, you're a regular magician. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, does that feel good. Man, Lefty didn't do such a bad job with our part either, Error O'Brien. Boy, were those copper surprised. Talk about dumb clock. Oh, pipe down, will you, Trent? You talk too much. We weren't so clever ourselves. We forgot to lift the keys of the handcuffs. Now listen, whatever you do, don't stick your nose outside of this apartment until you hear from Lanny. This town's going to be plenty hot for the next couple of days. Well, what about you and Trent? If we're picked up, we got a watertight alibi. Here's the clothes the boss told me to get you, Jim. Slick, we'll be over at Curly's. Okay. Would you mind telling me how this whole thing was handled? You're out, ain't you? Yeah, but I still can't figure out why it was a cinch, pal. Lefty and Trent grabbed the two coppers that went to the penitentiary to get you. They left them tied up on the road and took their places. They'll get 20 years if it's ever proved. Don't worry about that. Lanning's plenty smart. How did you happen to get mixed up in this deal? Well, between you, me, and the lamppost, I ain't keen on it. But anything for a pal. Oh, thanks, Rick. I'm going to give you a piece of advice. The sooner you turn those sparklers over to the boss and get out of town, the better it's going to be for you, see? You know, Lefty and Trent didn't help spring you for nothing. They're a couple of bad babies, and they collect one way or another. Oh, hello. Come in. Jim. Martha. Jim, I'm so glad to see you. Martha. What are you doing here? Why, she paid Lanning to spring you. Shh, not 
so loudly sleepy. Okay. Do you realize you might go to prison for this? Well, it was the only way I could get you out, Jim, to try and prove your innocence. I know you're not guilty. Well, if you had any evidence that would help, why didn't you testify during the trial? I didn't know anything about the murder. All the trial until a week ago, I was in Burma. Burma? You were in Burma? You weren't in town the night Henry was murdered? I had an argument with him that evening and told him I was through. Then I took the eight o'clock plane out of the city to... to try and find you. You didn't go to his office that night? Why do you ask? Well, I had an appointment to meet him there, and while I was waiting, I... I found your handkerchief on the floor. Jim. Then you believe that I... Oh, I didn't know what to believe. Oh, now I understand why you wouldn't talk to me at the prison. I must have lost my handkerchief when I stopped by to drive Henry home for dinner. Oh, that accounts for it. I've been such a fool. Promise me we won't let any misunderstandings come between us again. Darling, the only thing that can come between us now is the law. Until I've proven myself innocent, I'm living on borrowed time. Rand and Hobbs testified falsely against you. Now, I'm sure one of them, perhaps both of them, know who killed Henry. You're right, Martha. That's just why I accepted Lanning's proposition. I hoped I might be able to prove it. We must prove it. I've risked everything to arrange your escape. With you out of prison, I'm positive I can produce evidence that you were framed. Does Lanning know what you have in mind? Well, Lanning's convinced you're guilty. He thinks you're going to give me the Denorman necklace to sell. He expects a third from the profit. He's sure going to be disappointed when he finds out different. <sighs> but you must keep him from being suspicious. If he thinks for one minute he's not going to get his share out of this, he'll tell the police where to find you. Darling, I promise to do anything you say. We continued on to the penitentiary in the police car. They presented authentic credentials to the warden and the prisoner was turned over to them. That's unbelievable. Did the officers recognize the two men that held them up? No. And we have no description of them in our files. We dropped by to give you a word of warning, Mr. Rand. Your testimony helped convict O'Brien. Now that he's out, he's liable to try and get revenge. Oh. Is Mr. Rand in? He's busy right now, Mrs. Courtney. Would you mind waiting? Oh, thank you. Surely you don't believe Mrs. Courtney had anything to do with O'Brien's escape. In our line, we're taught to believe anything until proven otherwise. Mrs. Courtney visited O'Brien several times at the penitentiary. We'd like to locate her. That should be easy. You know her address. I have an officer stationed at the house. But she hasn't been home. Well, the longer we live, the more we learn. Yeah, I guess you're right. There's a possibility that Mrs. Courtney may try to communicate with you. If she does, let me know. The district attorney is very anxious to see her. I'll be glad to, Johnson. Well, goodbye. Thanks for dropping in. Don't mention it. You may go in now. This is a surprise. Did those detectives see you? Detectives? I didn't see any detectives. Those two men that just left were officers. They've been trying to find you. Wanted to ask you a few questions. Then I rather imagine your visitors told you of Jim O'Brien's escape. Yes, they did. If you had anything to do with aiding him, I'd advise you to get out of town right away. If you didn't, it might be a good idea to go to the police before they pick you up. I'll decide that after you've heard what I have to say. All right. What is it? Well, you had an argument with Henry over your share from the sale of the Norman diamonds. 
Are you still interested in making some money? You mean you know where the necklace is? Well, Jim O'Brien was accused of stealing it. He's free. And I believe if he has it, he'll turn it over to me. Then you've heard from O'Brien? I'm not admitting anything yet. But I know where I can make an appointment for you to meet him, if you're still willing to help me dispose of the necklace. You know you're asking me to break the law, don't you? I'm sure it won't be the first time, Mr. Rand. Do as I ask, and they'll split the money four ways. Why four ways? You don't imagine Jim got out of the death house all by himself, do you? Well, if O'Brien convinces me that he has the necklace, I'll arrange to sell it. Where can I meet him? We'll be at 460 Heron Street at 7 o'clock tonight. Arthur, 204. Tell him I'll be there. Good. I won't try to thank you, Mr. Rand. You know how I feel. And run along before I change my mind. Wait here, Smith. Keep your eyes on the door. Yeah, come in. O'Brien. Hey, what's the idea? Where's Jim O'Brien? Never heard of him. Don't give me that. We were tipped off that Jim O'Brien was going to be here tonight. You won up on me, pal. I never heard of the gent. If he's supposed to be here, it's news to me. Nobody else around, Chief. Naturally, there ain't. Now, get out of here and let me go back to work, will you? The fella can't even make an honest dollar anymore without being bothered by you coppers. You're a slick feeny, aren't you? Ain't you the smart one? After all the times you pinched me, now you want to know who I am. Skip the funny paper act. Where's Jim O'Brien? Seems to me I've heard of that guy. He's going to get hung for the killing of a bloke by the name of uh, Courtney. He was going to get hung. You know perfectly well he escaped, and you probably know where he is. Oh, that ain't right, Chief, accusing me of things like that. Why, I got gypped out of five bucks by that son of a gun. Five bucks that I gave the warden to buy flowers for him after he was hung. I ought to go back to the big house and demand a refund. When you go back to the big house, Slick, it'll be for a better reason than a bouquet. You got me all wrong, pal. I give Warden Burke my word of honor that I'd go the straight and narrow when he left me out. And I ain't a guy that breaks his word. All right. All right, Slick. We'll believe you this time. So long, coppers. Phone me the next time you're coming up, will you? And I'll have lunch ready. Slick Beanie isn't fooling anyone with himself. You stay here. I surely hope your plan works. It has to work, Jim. Who is it? Slick. We've been expecting you. What happened, Slick? Did Rand show up? Nope, but the cops did. My old friend Johnson was with him. And is he dumb? Why, he's so ignorant he couldn't catch cold in a barrel of rainwater. He left the two coppers to watch the front and back of the apartment and forgot to watch the side fire escape. Well, that proves we we're right about Rand, Jim. He must have had some very definite reason for wanting you out of the way. Well, now that we know Rand's position, I'd better check on Hobbs. You'll do nothing of the kind. You'll stay right here and don't let anyone in unless you know who it is. I'm taking Slick with me. 
But what if the cops pick you up? Well, all they can do is ask me a lot of questions and let me go. They've got nothing on me. Now, remember what I say. Stay right here and don't open the door. Calling car number 27 in District 65. Go to 46th and Heron. 46th and Heron. Report to Detective Johnson. That is all. Calling car number 72. Car number 72. Go to 46th and Heron Street. Keep siren quiet. Report to Detective Johnson. That is all. I think I'm going to enjoy this little dinner you set up for me, Hobbs. <laughs> I sincerely hope so, sir. Success and a long life, Hobbs. After tonight, we won't have to worry about Jim O'Brien. Right you are, sir. A splendid toast. Mind if I join you? Oh, uh, don't put your glasses down, gentlemen. I'll drink a toast with you. To the hangman. May his noose tighten only around the throats of those who are guilty. How'd you get here? What do you want? How I got here really doesn't matter, Rand. But you and Hobbs will soon find out what I want. Now sit down, won't you? And keep your hands on top of the table. Oh, what a lovely dinner. Almost as nice as the one they planned for me this evening in the death house. Uh, by the way, Hobbs, where's Mrs. Courtney? Does she know that you're entertaining such a distinguished guest this evening? I really didn't expect to find him here. I haven't seen Mrs. Courtney, sir, since she disappeared the night Mr. Courtney was murdered. Hmm. But you have heard that she's back in town. Well, I... Well, Mr. Rand did tell me something about it. Hmm. Mr. Rand tells you lots of things, doesn't he, Hobbs? Told you to testify against me during my trial. I don't know why you should say that, sir. I served Mr. Courtney faithfully for many years, and you know it, with never a blemish on my record. Oh, blemish is not the word, Hobbs. But the Singapore police know all about your record. You and Rand tried to swear my life away. But now you're both going to tell the truth about how Henry Courtney was killed and who stole the Norman necklace. You're going to put it in writing, and you're going to sign it. You think you can trick us into confessing a crime we had nothing to do with? You're crazy. You think so, eh? Well, let me tell you something. If the law happens to pick me up, I'll hang for a murder I didn't commit. But my neck won't stretch any further if there are a couple of murders I do commit. Now get up. Both of you. We're going in the library, and we're going to do a little writing. Come on. He got away. You stupid ox. I sent in a general alarm. Some important business? 
Is it an almond necklace? No. Nope. Something a little more important to me than that. Listen, O'Brien. That necklace might not be important to you, but it is to me. And the boss ain't talking, just to exercise his throat. Oh, you'll get your necklace all right. When? Oh, in the next day or two. If you're figuring to pull a double cross, O'Brien, take my advice and don't. You give me a stall about keeping undercover until the hunt dies down, and the minute I turn my back, you duck out. What's the gag? I told you I had some important business to attend to with a gentleman by the name of Rand. Oh, well, don't let your personal grudges overrule your better judgment. Now, uh, if you can travel about the city for one reason, you can do it for another. The next time you leave here, you'll have company. And you'll bring back that next. Okay, Trent, let's go. Good morning. Good morning. Will you tell Mr. Rand Roger Lanning is here? Uh, yes? Mr. Roger Lanning to see you, sir. Send him in. Morning, Mr. Rand. How are you, Lanning? Sit down. What can I do for you? Rand, um, just how much is it worth to you to know where Jim O'Brien can be found? Why do you think I'm interested in finding O'Brien? I don't think anything about it. I know you are. Now, let's quit stalling and get down to cases. You want Jim O'Brien to send back to the death house where he'll hang. I know where he is. Suppose I were to call the police and tell them what you just said. You're too smart for that, Rand. Well, we make a deal, don't we? For the good of the community, I'm willing to pay you $10,000 for your information. Come again, Rand. That's small change. How much, then? 25000 It's a bargain. I'll give you a check as soon as O'Brien's picked up. Where is it? You'll get a call in the next 10 minutes giving the exact address. I'll be around later to collect. But, um, no checks. I want cash. Climaxing one of the most important manhunts in recent years, police recaptured Jim O'Brien, fugitive murder. O'Brien surrendered without attempting to defend himself. According to the district attorney, O'Brien will be returned at once to the state prison where he will be hanged today for the cold-blooded murder of Henry Corton. Although grilled by the police, O'Brien refused to name those who aided him to escape. Frisco Malone previously entered the county jail for lack of evidence as soon as the execution is carried out. Well, that's that. We can rest easier now. There's your 25000 Thank you. When you get rid of the Denorman diamonds, remember me. I don't believe I quite understand you, Lanning. Want me to draw pictures for you? Pictures that might not look too good if shown to the district attorney. You trying to blackmail me? Blackmail's a rather ugly word, Mr. Rand. Almost as ugly as murder. Uh, call me up sometime. Uh, we have a lot in common. We should get along well together. You know, um, form some sort of mutual assistance league. Oh. 
Who's there? Martha. Slick, they've got Jim. You're telling me. I was driving down 46th Street and I saw the cops coming out with him. There was nothing left for me to do but to come back here and wait for you. Wait till I get my hands on Lanning. It's two to one he's the boy that double-crossed us. Listen, we're after bigger game than Lanning. Did you get the package? Yes, here it is. Would you mind telling me what's in it? Well, you'll find out just as soon as we've had a pleasant little talk with Joseph Rand. Sorry things had to turn out the way they have, O'Brien. I was in hopes that... I understand, Warden. How long do I have? Four o'clock. I'll send the prison chaplain into you. to see you, sir. Well, tell her I was just leaving. She says it's important. All right. Send her in. You may go in now. Thank you. I imagine your visit has something to do with O'Brien's arrest. That's right. But don't let your imagination run away with you. What do you want now? Well, first, I'd like to congratulate you on the promptness you displayed in telling the police where you thought O'Brien might be picked up. But I didn't. You were the only one who knew. You don't think that I went to the trouble to arrange Jim's escape for nothing, do you? I told you I wanted the Norman dial, And I wanted you to help me dispose of them. I'm afraid it's too late to discuss that possibility now, Mrs. Courtney. But that's where you're wrong. You see, I happen to have the necklace. You... you have the necklace? Why, certainly. That's the only reason I wanted Jim out of prison. He handed them over to me shortly before his recapture. Uh, let me see them. There might be a mistake. I'll hand them over to you when you find the buyer. Where was it hidden? I haven't the faintest idea. What's your answer? All right. I'll see what I can do. Call me at five o'clock. Good. Slick, follow him. Looks like our plan is working. All right, Smith. What is this? A 
hold up? No, a kick up the left. I had an idea if I showed you a good imitation of the, the Norman method. You trap yourself. Which means you're going to stretch the rope instead of Jim O'Brien. Hobbs has just confessed to your Henry. Hobbs lied. Nobody was around when I... When you fired the shot? Is that what you're trying to explain? I'm not trying to explain anything. Maybe a few words from me would help the situation. Drop that gun, Slick. Then move back. This little drama reminds me of a play I saw one time, Mrs. Courtney. It was all about a bunch of cheats trying to out-cheat one another. And just as in the play, the smartest cheat wins. All right, Lanny. Up with him. I know when I'm finished, Jim. I'll get here. Mrs. Courtney took me off to follow her from your office. You're a clever woman. I killed Henry Courtney. down what I have to say. I'll sign it. Courtney residence. Just one moment, sir. It's for you, sir. important, sir? I'd say there is. But I... I don't understand, sir. You will when you get down to headquarters. Move along. O'Brien. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. I got it. He named Peter Hobbs the Courtney Butler as his accomplice. Hobbs planted the murder gun in O'Brien's suitcase. A couple of more points like that and I'll never be able to open another safe. Oh, come on, your, your safe training days are over, Slick. You don't suppose they change their minds about releasing Jim, do you? I wouldn't be knowing, Mrs. Courtney. Never having had very much to do with prisons. Oh, don't you? Jim! Oh. You're sure a sight for sore eyes, pal. Where'd you get the posies? These belong to you, Slick. The warden said you paid for them. Holy smokes. I thought I was going to get chipped out of that five bucks. <laughs> you know, I bought these for your funeral. But it looks like I'll use them for your wedding. <laughs> it's difference. It's all right with me. How about you? Thank <laughs> you.